Good evening students, I am Chaitanya, Assistant Professor in Mathematics, Department of Mathematics, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, located at Dundigal Hyderabad. Today, as a part of our discussion in third module, we are going to discuss an important algorithm called expectation and maximization algorithm. So, our topic of discussion is on uh, expectation and maximization algorithm, which is briefly known as EM algorithm. Okay, let us look into the details. In the real world applications of machine learning, it is very common that there are many relevant features available for learning by only a small subset of them are observed. That means, uh, in the real world of applications of machine learning, the real world applications of machine learning, you can see only few, few applications only are observable or perceived with our senses. senses. This is what it is telling. It is very common that there are many relevant features available for learning, but only small subset of them are perceived through our senses. Okay. So, for the variables which are sometimes observable and sometimes not, then we can use the instances when that variable is visible, is observed for the purpose of learning and then predict its value in the instance when it is not observed. That means, so, as just in the previous paragraph, we can observe some variable, that is some features are observed or perceived and some features are not observed. In a photograph, you may clearly, you may be able to watch certain parts, but some parts are not visible. This is what you understand. So, when you are given with a data set, some features may be clearly observable and visible, some features may be not visible. So, what you have to do, you have to predict the missing features with the help of the available features. That means, the features which are observed should help you to guess or predict or anticipate the features which are not being able to observe. So that's what the prime motto of uh, EM algorithm. Okay. On the other hand, expectation and maximization algorithm can be used for the latent variables. What do you mean latent variables? Let us come, come, come along with the, the let us retrospect into our uh, very beginning of the course, that is, what do you mean by feature? Feature is nothing but the columns of the data set. They are also called as dimensions. Okay. Sometimes you may have to suppose, you may have to reduce the dimensions to uh, utilize the storage space properly. Okay. And you have to analyze the data set or the features. Okay. Now, the features are also called as variables. So there are several names, columns of the data set or the features or the dimensions or uh, variables. All these are synonyms, just uh, nothing but the columns of the data set. Now, we are discussing about the uh, special variables called latent variables. What is latent variables? Latent variables are nothing but the features which are not directly observable. Are not directly uh, perceived. So now the expectation ma and maximization algorithm will be used to predict that latent variable in a most accurate way. Uh, so it in order to predict their values with the condition that the general form of probability distribution governing those latent variables is known to us. So for this we have been designed with a algorithm, with an algorithm called expectation and magnification algorithm, which is based on probability distributions, random probability distributions and their properties. So, depending on the available data set and the distribution of the data points, say some data points may be distributed in a normal shape or some data points may be distributed in a binomial shape or exponential shape or some other curve, other, other probability distribution. We, basing on the distribution of the data set, we will fix one probability distribution and we will use that probability distribution uh, 
as a driving force in the expectation and maximum algorithm to predict the missing feature values. That's what the paragraph is trying to tell us. This algorithm is actually as the base of many unsupervised clustering algorithms in the field of machine learning. Now, my question is what is the difference between supervised learning and unsupervised learning in machine learning? What are what do you understand? How how could you differentiate between the supervised learning and unsupervised learning in machine learning? See, let me let me just make you to recap the things once. Uh, first, see here in supervised learning. Uh, first, let us discuss what is machine learning. Machine learning is nothing but making the machine to learn by itself. Making the machine to learn by itself means making the computer to program itself. It need not take programming from us. It can develop its own program. That's what the primitive uh, goal of uh, machine learning. So in that part, there are two kinds of training of computer to make it program or uh, to make it program itself. Then one is supervised and another one is unsupervised. And a supervised you will just first you will give a sample data and you will give a sample program and you will show that this is the output. So by using that sample data and applying that given sample algorithm on the data, the computer stores all these things in storage space. Now you will give the original data and you will give you you will uh, in this training, the co computer will uh, learn from the sample algorithm. It will build a new algorithm for the given original data and it gives the output. That's what supervised learning. That means you will be there. You will give a sample training to the computer, uh, sample programming, sample data. That's what's supervised. But unsupervised learning means it's completely different. You will not direct. Uh, you will not give any training to a computer. Instead, you will uh, you will uh, let the computer to uh, find patterns among the data set and pick up the required data according to the challenge. According to the challenge ahead of it, ahead of it, it will classify the data. It will extract the data necessary, and it will predict the missing features by using some probabilistic distributions. So that is what you call unsupervised learning. So now uh, this algorithm actually based base, base uh, the, at the base of many unsupervised class. That means under unsupervised learnings, uh, this algorithm plays a vital role and it plays as a basic algorithm for many algorithms under unsupervised learning. That's what in this paragraph we come to know. Okay, now. It was explained and proposed and given its name in a paper published in 1977 by Arthur Dempster, Nan Lyle, and Donald Rubin. It is used uh, to find the local maximum likelihood parameters of a statistical model in the case where latent variants are involved and the data is missing or incomplete. That means here we are just looking into the history of the birth of EM algorithm. EM algorithm, the expectation and maximization algorithm, has been explained and proposed and developed and published in the paper written by Mr. Arthur Dempster, Non Lear, and Donald Rubin in the year 1977. And the statement runs like that it is supposed uh, the EM algorithm is designed to find the local maximum likelihood parameters of statistical model. We have a normal distribution or a uh, Gaussian distribution or a Cauchy's or exponential. But every distribution have its parameters. So to find out the local maximum likelihood parameter, likelihood estimates of the parameters, this they have developed an algorithm or a theorem actually. It's called a theorem, expectation maximization theorem. So it the theorem is uh, proposed by these three authors in the year 1970s. Okay, and basing on that theorem, uh, later on the 
computer scientists are used to develop this algorithm and it is playing now a very key role in machine learning. Algorithm. I mean, the expectation and maximization algorithm. We have to understand it as E M algorithm. What is E? What is E in 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 this? What is E? First of all, E is nothing but expectation, and M is nothing but the maximization. That means first you expect. First, we expect the missing value with the help of some statistical methods. That is what the expectation step is step, expected. And after expecting that, try to maximize that expected value to the possible extent. That is called maximization step. First, expect the missing value or missing feature, and after expecting. It to some extent try to optimize or maximize it by using the maximization. So it is a two interlinked process. First you expect, then you will uh, use that expectation to improve it. Okay, first you will guess it initially like this, then you will improve it. Again, the improvement will be used to uh, uh, find out, uh, expect the second guess. Or the next next iteration, and in the next iteration again, you will the value will be maximized, and the maximization again will be reused to for third iteration. Like that, it's interlinked circular process. So expectation step means using the observed the available data of the data set estimate the values of the missing data. Suppose you have a data set x one, x two, so on, x n. Suppose x two is missing. Okay, then you are you are known with x1 x3 and x4 is missing so like that you will have some columns are missing some columns are available so first observe the data available and estimate the values of the missing data by using sortable probability distribution okay after that complete the data generated the expectation step used in order to update the parameters now after estimating the missing like x2 x4 now you fill all the data and again use them x1 x2 xn to find out the mu and sigma suppose we are using normal distribution new mu and new sigma with the help of with the help of that new mu and new sigma again find out x2 and x4 again fill them in the data set again you will get an improved data set again find out for the new data set Use that new data set to find out another new mu, new mu and new sigma. Again, use new mu, new mu and new sigma to find out next improved values of x2 and x4. Like that, you have to repeat this process, this algorithm until you will not find any difference in the existing x2 x4 values and the newly found x2 x2 x4 values. That means. The same values are repeating, repeating, repeating. Then you will stop the process. Okay, that means converts completely. They have saturated the values are reached to the maximum possible. Extent. Then you will stop. This is called expectation maximization. Okay, so these are this is interlinked loop. Okay, now expectation step use current parameters to reconstruct the hidden structure. Whatever the available things, you have to utilize them. And you have to fill the gaps, and you have to reconstruct the hidden structure. Maximization step: use that hidden structure to re-estimate the parameters. Now, what you have built newly, use that blocks to uh, improve the formula, which the statistical formula you use to predict them. You improve that formula parameters by using the newly found values of the missing features, and by again using the new parameters. Again, estimate the missing features. Then you will find an improvement, improvement until to a certain extent. Okay. So this is what you can in this diagram you can easily understand. M step, E step, E step again leads to M step again. It leads to E step, E step again leads to M step, and M step again leads to E step. This process will be stopped when 
there is no improvement in the value of x to further improvement then we will stop that's what e m alvar okay now the essence of expectation and maximization algorithm uh, is to use the available observed data of the data set to estimate the missing data and then using the data to update the values of the parameters let us understand the exam algorithm in detail simply just what i have told you now that's what been summarized in this paragraph which is highlighted in reading the essence of expectation and maximization algorithm is nothing but to use the available observed data the data set to estimate the missing data and that data to update the values of the parameter that means first you estimate the missing data and use that missing data to estimate the parameter or to improve the parameters again by improved parameters again estimate the missing data values again with the new missing data values again improve the parameters like that the chain should be revolved okay initially let us discuss in a step by step initially a set of initial values of the parameters are considered that means in iteration suppose you are trying to uh, estimate the missing features x2 and x4 so you start with x2 0 x4 0 that means starting initially you start with some initial guessed values x2 0 0 x4 0 means starting very beginning iteration okay a set of incomplete observed data is given to the system with the assumption that the observed data comes from a specific model of course specific model means the formula through which you are going to iterate the values the statistical distribution the next step is known as expectation e step in this step we use the observed data in order to estimate or guess the values of the missing that means you are missing x2 x4 so you have to find the first iteration of x2 and the first iteration of x4 by using available that is x1 x3 x5 x6 so on by using this you will find these two okay then now after finding this you will fill the data set like this x1 comma x2 power first iteration or first um, improved value x3 known x x4 just now improved first iteration x5 already known x6 okay let us assume only six pips then with this you will try to uh, improve the find out the new parameter value that is new new mu and new sigma in the normal distribution okay with this new mu and new sigma again you will try to iterate find out the iterated values x2 second value and x4 second value and again you will repeat this process the next step known as maximization step in this step we use the complete data generated in the preceding expectation step in order to update the values of the parameters it is basically used to update the hypothesis okay hypothesis means a statement written about mu and sigma that's what that means improving mu and sigma so e is improving x2 and x4 m is meant for improving mu and sigma expectation is for expecting the missing features x to x4 maximization is for improving accordingly the parameters which are used in the formula that is mu and sigma okay now in the fourth step it is checked whether the values are converging or not that means once uh, the suppose you have started with x2 value 2.01 it reach 2.01 to again in the next iteration it reached 0.127 next it reached 0.2.0128 next iteration again it repeated 128 next iteration also repeated 0128 that means you are saturated there is no improvement that means you have reached the maximum possible iteration then you will stop the process yeah okay that's what this lines are meaning to tell this fourth step of algorithm okay so if you write a flow chart of em algorithm it would be like uh, look like this start with initial values expect the missing values 
use them to maximize the parameters. By maximize the parameters, okay, check whether the values are converted or not. If they are not converted, again find out the missing values. Improved missing values. Again use the improved val missing values to maximize the parameters. Check whether any difference between the previous in previous missing values estimation and the current estimation. If there is difference, again go with again estimate the values with the formula and use them for mag maximization of parameters. Check out whether any difference between the previous values and current values. If both are same, stop. Stop means yes and stop. Uh, if both are not same, again repeat the process. That's what. It can be used to fill the missing data in a sample. It can be used as the basis of unsupervised learning of clusters. It can be used for the purpose of estimating the parameters of hidden Marco model. It can be used for discovering the values of latent variables. So these are the uses of EM algorithm. Okay, uh, it can be used for the missing data in the sample or latent variables, Markovian models, and unsupervised learnings. Okay, advantages of EM algorithm. Okay, now. It is always guaranteed that uh, likelihood will increase each iteration. What is the advantage of EML algorithm? Means always the likelihood estimation, that is the statistical procedure we are using, always guarantees an increase in the iteration. Okay. And the E step and M step are often pretty easy for many problems in terms of implementing. That means calculation wise. The algorithm is very, very calculated friendly. In many cases, we we'll use very, very well known distributions like normal distribution, Gaussian distribution. So, it won't trouble you to uh, find out the values in calculation, in terms of calculation. Solution to the M steps often exist in the closed form. Definitely, parameters of the distribution you are going to use. Mu or sigma, definitely they will be a, uh, like uh, real numbers, they won't be like complex numbers or imaginary numbers or uh, 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 like uh, extending decimals. No, no, it's, it's always a finite decimal or a rational number or a rational number with finite decimal cases. So it won't uh, trouble you, that's what it's saying. It has slow. What are the disadvantages of EM algorithm? When you are uh, applying this algorithm uh, to find out the missing data values, the convergence rate may be low. That means it may take too many steps to reach the maximum possible extent. It may take hundreds of steps or thousands of It makes convergence to the local optimum only. And that too, to the uh, prescribed domain only, it guarantees. The maximization. It requires both probabilities forward and backward. Numerical op operation requires only, only for um, it requires both the probabilities forward and backward. That means the probability, con conditional probability from the preceding and the succeeding way. Both ways you have to compare. Okay. Now our question is whether the EM algorithm converges. That means what happens if the process is going on, going on, going on, going on, even though it happens, how, how could you tell that that is a valid algorithm? Yes, there is no question of non convergence Definitely this process will converge at one place or the other. There is no point of divergence. That means going on, going indefinitely going, no, not, not, not at all. Definitely, it will converge at one point or the other, one step or the other. For that, we are going to use this uh, equation on uh, the conditional probability density function. That is, probability of t comma y given theta, where theta is a parameter and t comma y are the variables, is equal to probability of t given y comma theta into probability of y given theta. This is a famous formula, the probability density function. Now, when we apply log on both sides, suppose I'm just taking this P of T 
y given theta is equal to p of t given y comma theta into p of y comma t y given theta. Now apply log on both sides. Applying log on both sides. You know what is log m and log m plus log m. Okay. So what do you get? Log p of t given y comma theta plus log p of y given theta. Okay. So here um, when, when you reverse the say here log now your interest is log p of p of t comma y by theta right this is log now your interest is this your interest is to find out this value so you will take this to the left side then this plus becomes minus, then you will get this equation. So, applying log on both sides and uh, keeping the required thing on one side and bringing everything to the left side, you will get re reach that thing. Okay. So, that plays an important role in proving that the process converges. Now, we take the conditional expectation of log P of Y given theta dash of theta. You can understand expectation. Expectation means, you know, for discrete random variable, expectation means summation x into p of x. For continuous random variable, it is x into f of x. Okay, here is 0 to infinity or 0 to n or here minus infinity. Now, by using that, assuming it is a dis, uh, discrete, we could reach this. Okay, and here, this, here it, this contains no 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 t. Do you observe? Here you are observing t. This function p contains t, and the summation runs on t. Summation runs on t. Sorry. Yes, summation runs on t here, but and this function contains t, but here you can find no t. That means it is a constant. So, constant can be written outside, that means log of p of y given theta dash is equal to into summation t into probability of t given y comma theta, that's what. Being constant, you can write it outside. So, constant comes out, so this remains inside, so you got this. Now, my question is, what is sum of all probabilities? Total probability is always 1 total probability is always sum of all probabilities when you put all probabilities together it leads to 1 so sum of all probabilities will be 1 that means this will be 1 1 into this that is why we have we obtained the answer that. okay and combining these two expressions we got log p of y given theta dash is expectation of log p of t you come out y dash y given theta okay now here we are going to substitute this thing we are going to substitute this thing uh, instead of this we are going to substitute this thing okay then we will reach we will reach this stage this minus e of log of p of t given y comma theta dash okay which is which is uh, just represented as some function of theta comma theta dash because it contains only theta and theta dash we can call it as a function of theta comma theta dash so what you are observing finally t is not at all seen here that means it is converged completely theta theta dash means uh, you are getting a fixer also that means t is vanishing that means convergence is guaranteed okay now so, so in this way, that theorem guarantees, that proof guarantees us that uh, this EM algorithm always converges. Okay. Now, uh, this also helps us to prove Jensen's inequality. Jensen inequality, P of x and Q of x are two discrete random variables. Then, P of x into log P of x greater than or equal to summation x into P of x log Q of x. 
improving this inequality. Okay, with this equality happens only if and only if e of x is equal to q of x for all x. So here you can see the proof. I'll just give the proof in a brief way. So this is p of x log p of x minus summation p of x log q of x is always greater than to zero. And you observe by taking summation p of x as common, you'll observe log p of x minus log q of log p of x minus q of x minus log q of x greater than equal to zero. Log m minus log n means log m by n. You know log m minus log n is equal to log m by n. That's what resulted into. Okay, and when you reciprocate, automatically the symbol changes greater than to less than. So in this way you got this inequality. This is very famously known as. But from that we can establish the famous Jensen's inequality. That's what we mean to because we are using this formula, which is very famous formula in natural algorithm. By using this, with that previous inequality, we'll reach at this famous Jensen's inequality. Okay. Now, I'd like to conclude my lecture with this. What is exactly we have shown in first quantity? One minute. Yes, caveats. The EML uh, theorem doesn't tell us how to find the estimation and aggregation equations. Simply tell us if they can be found. We can use them to improve our models. Fortunately, for a wide range of engineering problems, we can find acceptable solutions using Gaussian mixture distributions and estimations like EML. Okay, so this is this is what I'd like to share. Things on EM algorithm to you. Okay, with this, I'd like to conclude my lecture. In the next class, we'll meet with one more interesting topic from third one. Thank you all. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.